in Logan County, Oklahoma, a slice of historical Americana. At one time, Guthrie was the capital of this state. Today, it's a city of 10,000. It's downtown, a national historic landmark. But those old Victorian buildings are cracking, and time is not the only culprit. I don't even know how to go ahead and fix that. John Sinian owns this building and runs a business that markets itself on how to be ready when the unexpected happens. For Sinian, it already has. We, we came out here from California, so I understand what earthquakes are like. And uh, we thought, okay, we'll trade earthquakes off for tornadoes. Well, now we got both. Because Tornado Alley has become a hotbed of earthquakes. We're having another earthquake right now. The studio lights are shaking as we speak. That was New Year's Day as a 4.2 magnitude earthquake struck 22 kilometers north of Oklahoma City. One month later, a 5.1 magnitude earthquake near the city of Fairview. The largest ever recorded, a 5.6 in Prague, Oklahoma in 2011. And the earthquakes are getting stronger. Oklahoma is now as prone to earthquakes as California, but it wasn't always that way. On average, before 2009, the state had two earthquakes a year that were 3.0 or larger. That has rapidly increased. Last year, there were more than 900. The average, about two and a half per day. From his sprawling northern Oklahoma property, Mark Crisman has watched many of those tremors firsthand. And two, two injection wells. Buried on his property, a seismometer, given to him as part of a research project at Oklahoma State University. Oh, I'd sit here off and on for 14 hours a day in the beginning. I logged everything I saw on that thing. Crisman is a Vietnam vet who, after retiring from the Army, made his living in electronics. These days, he has time on his hands and plenty well, of strong opinions. Oil companies control everything in this state, okay? Everything. Well, it should have been dealt with a long time ago, and they should have shut it down completely, okay? That's what they should have done in the beginning, but they didn't do it. What he's talking about is this, a wastewater disposal well. In Oklahoma, there are nearly 4,000 of them. Horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing has meant a rapid increase in Oklahoma's energy sector. But for every barrel of oil that comes out of the ground, so does several barrels of salty wastewater. It flows up during oil and gas production and the wells inject it deep underground. Last year, 1.5 billion barrels of it was pumped back into the earth. For years, there has been talk that all that wastewater was causing a pressure change underground, triggering faults to slip. But officials were hesitant to make the connection. One in five jobs in Oklahoma are in the energy industry. They're even working oil wells on the grounds of the state capitol. The oil and gas industry is an anchor industry in Oklahoma. Tim Baker is with the Oklahoma Corporations Commission, the state regulator. And we wanted to make sure we weren't uh, speculating or just taking a wild guess that there was a relationship there. So we wanted real evidence, real science to prove that there is a relationship between the disposal and the earthquakes. While the research was underway, the earthquakes continued, some dangerously close to one of the largest supplies of crude oil in the world. More than 65 million barrels of oil is stored at the tank farms in Cushing, Oklahoma. It's been deemed critical infrastructure by the Department of Homeland Security, but in recent years, there's been a number of earthquakes very close to here. After a series of earthquakes in 2014 and 2015, Oklahoma's Oil and Gas Commission ordered companies to shut down some of the wells nearby and to reduce the water they were injecting into others. But the earthquakes continued throughout other parts of the state, causing millions of dollars in damage. It started out just the vertical crack in probably December, and then in January, the crack moved down the wall to this break here. Brad Wilson has no doubt that the earthquakes caused all of these cracks. We have days where we'll have three or four a day. You can literally come in after an earthquake or the next morning and it'll be deeper and wider and a bigger crack. But his insurance claim was denied. The company argued the cracks were just part of an aging building. The house has been repaired at this point, but you can still see some damage. 
that was here. Lisa Griggs considers herself lucky. Insurance covered the $100,000 of repairs that needed to be done on her foundation, floors and ceilings. Everybody talks about, um, you know, which earthquake did that damage to your house? It wasn't a single one, it's cumulative. What do you think of the response from the regulators and the government? It is completely inadequate. I, I think the regulators and the government um, are ignoring us. In February, the Oil and Gas Commission took another step. It asked companies in western Oklahoma to reduce the amount of wastewater they're injecting by 40 percent. Then last month, it expanded that order, so it now covers a larger area and includes more than 600 wells. And of course, if your house is shaking, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what we're doing. Whatever we're doing, it's not enough. So uh, ask my wife. <laughs> what does she have to say about it? She said she, she wanted to know why I wasn't out there looking for those wells that were causing the earthquakes. Scientists know that some wells trigger tremors, but it's an evolving field of study. Researchers are still trying to figure out what other factors are involved and what can be done to reduce the risks. We have a lot of vulnerable structures. Last week, hundreds of seismologists gathered at this conference in Nevada where a big part of the focus was on induced earthquakes. Is Canada fundamentally different from the U.S.? Oklahoma may be the most extreme case, but it's far from the only one. Researchers found that 90% of earthquakes in western Canada, above a 3.0, have been triggered by oil and gas operations. How strong those ground motions can be. Gail Atkinson is a professor of geophysics at Western University. She says unlike in Oklahoma, fracking, not injection wells, have been linked to most of the quakes in Canada. Two years ago, if you had asked people if you could trigger earthquakes of magnitude four to four and a half from hydraulic fracturing, most people would have laughed and said, no, 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 that will never happen. But yet? But yet we've had in the last uh, few years several uh, at the magnitude four to four and a half range. So we now know it can happen. The quakes in Fox Creek and in northern BC haven't caused any damage, but Atkinson says what Canada should take away from the Oklahoma experience is the importance of being prepared. There's no way of predicting which wells can set off an earthquake or how large one could be. It would be nice to say we've had magnitude four and a half earthquakes in western Canada and we haven't seen any damage yet and therefore we'll never see any damage, uh, I don't think you can reach that conclusion. I think damage is a function of getting um, the wrong ground motions in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's happened over and over again in Oklahoma. People, they kind of ignore it. You know, they're like, okay, well, this is a nuisance damage. It's, it's a nuisance. Having to deal with earthquakes is worth it for the low gas prices or worth it for the jobs. It's not. Because these are cumulative effects, it's a lot more damage than we expect. But the scale of it appears to be sinking in. A group of residents has launched a lawsuit against a dozen oil companies over the earthquakes. And Oklahoma's governor recently raided the state's emergency fund, directing nearly one and a half million dollars toward more research and oversight. For us to ignore this problem or industry to ignore this problem, that wasn't an option, not even with industry. They want this problem to go away as bad as anybody else does because it's a black eye to them as well. There have been fewer earthquakes so far this year, but it's too early to definitively say why. With the plunge in the price of oil, companies have scaled back operations, but it doesn't mean the worry has subsided. But if we have uh, something fairly large epicentered near Guthrie, I'm afraid those buildings are going to fall down. A fear that persists as the cracks grow in those old Victorian facades. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Logan County, Oklahoma.